Most people around here think of me as that lawyer that advertises on TV, but I'm a lot more than just a TV ad. Hopefully this is gonna give everyone a glimpse into my life and my law firm. Did you have a good day? <laughs> yes. My dad was a Methodist minister for over 50 years. So we grew up in small, small towns in uh, South Alabama. I had an older brother, and I uh, have a younger brother and a younger sister. And, uh, it, it was a military lifestyle, constantly moving every two or three years, but that made for a very, very close family. The good about being a preacher's kid, not only the foundation in, in uh, my Christian faith, but also, too, the uh, moving around part of it, you got to meet so many new folks. You learn to become a people person. You learn to make friends quick, and you learn to interact with uh, just about anybody and everybody in, in any situation. Growing up in a Methodist parsonage all those years, he saw his dad going out all hours of the day or night to meet uh, people, that, people that were in need. There were many times we had to make the trips with him to nursing homes, to hospitals. Uh, he didn't just go in many times by himself, we'd go in with him. We never knew any different because this was always the, the way that my dad would approach things. You were around death situations, you were around tragic illnesses, you were around families going through the worst times in their life and some going through the best times in their life. And you got to see it through his eyes but also be there as a, as a kid and, and learn life experiences from it. Very early on they were introduced into giving back to the community. Whenever we go out the door, he said, think about this. Who can you serve today? How can I make a difference in someone's life that I encounter? And that's translated to, to what I try to do now in my professional life. I attended Emory University. Uh, when I graduated, I went to Mercer Law School in Macon. And upon graduation in 1989, I had the opportunity to go and work for an insurance defense firm. Great experience. But uh, it was not gratifying at all trying to save the insurance company money. And I, I couldn't stomach that. I knew I wanted to be helping people on the other side. When I jumped ship and, and started helping injured victims and their families, boy, going to work took on a whole new meaning. These weren't files like it was with doing the, the work for the insurance company. These were real people, real problems. It's so gratifying. My hallmark of my practice is to practice law uh, by the golden rule, and so is Gary's. And it shows, and it benefits everyone he's around in his profession because of the way he says, this is the way I'm going to conduct myself. That's an incredible statement of a person. You can't really ask a question why bad things happen to, to people sometimes, because you can never pinpoint what it is. But I do know you can ask the question and we can often provide the answers, what can we do now? And that's where we come in and help provide the solution. I went to the doctor. We sat at pretty much a long table. He said he's going to be straight with me. He told me that I had a tumor the size of a baseball lodged in between my organs. We needed to start immediately. When people call us, when people walk through the door, it means something bad has happened to them or to their family member. And, and they don't know what to do. They have so many worries. How am I going to put food on the table? That paycheck is stopping, but the bills aren't. We understand it's not just the legal problem that we're working with with our clients. We're also counselors trying to help them through the, the emotional struggles that they're having to deal with. I had to um, go through high doses of radiation. You're literally having your insides cooked. The pain is a very major part of it. I applied for disability. I was denied. I was just about to give up. Then I saw an ad. It said, tell them you mean business. That's exactly what I needed to hear. We're all about giving people hope here. You know, they, they've had the, the odds stacked against them, the horrific things happening to them. But, but we stand in and we put a shield between them and the insurance company and we take care of the rest. I think the most important part is to find somebody that's going to make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. Because if you do not have that, there's no way you're going to get what you need. Uh, trust me, I know what it's like uh, experiencing a horrible outcome and, and wishing things can be different. Uh, I certainly experienced that with the loss of my older brother, Chuck. 
In 2000, he was diagnosed with colon cancer. The doctors at Piedmont Hospital gave him six months to live. And that's how progressed the cancer was. But he fought it and fought it valiantly for seven and a half years. I would go and, and sit with him at his home. Gary would go, our sister would go, our parents would go, and, and just talking to him. Sitting and watching Chuck slowly, um, you know, lose that battle was tough. It drew the family very, very close, even though we are extreme, were extremely close before uh, the tragic death of Chuck. You know, I, I, I realized in, in looking at, at my parents, when I, I told them that, that Chuck had passed, I, I'd seen that look before in my client's eyes, that it, it's unnatural for a child to predecease a parent. It's just not right. It makes me that much more compassionate and, and desire to work just as hard as I can for any parent that has lost a, a child. That sticks with you. It does. It uh, motivated him to draw upon resources within himself that he really didn't know he had. To me, that was a call to action. It, it was a, a wake-up call. Um, you know, tell me, Gary, get off your butt. You're doing some work here in the community. You're definitely making the charitable contributions, but you should be using your time and your talents to, to not only get out there and become more involved, but to encourage others to get involved. And I started an organization called I Will Make a Difference, and it's based on the John F. Kennedy quote. Uh, you know, he said, one person can make a difference and every person must try. Gary started supporting the fight against cancer in 2003. And um, since then, he has been one of our corporate sponsors every year and has just gone above and beyond in supporting us in various ways. Uh, Gwinnett County has the world's largest Relay for Life right here, and we've been participating in that every, ever since. Uh, we would ride adult-sized big wheels for a little over 10 miles to kick it off every year. Relay starts off with a survivor's walk. Everyone that's battling cancer, their caregivers, takes the initial lap around the, the Gwinnett County Fairgrounds. And I remember watching my brother do that a couple of years. Wow, it was extremely powerful. And uh, when it, it hit home was uh, the year that he lost his battle. They had what they call a luminaria ceremony. They will light the track with candles and a bagpipe player plays Amazing Grace and they take a lap in memory of those that lost the battle. In 2008, I started the, the nonprofit Keep Georgia Safe. And the reason why, there were three women from Georgia with ties to Georgia that all tragically lost their lives. My wife and I have three young daughters and we were thinking, what on earth can we do to make sure our daughters are safe in this world? And I started thinking, what are we doing to, to educate our families on how to be safe? So I wanted to create a uh, organization with a mission to provide safety education and crime prevention training. And that's what we've been doing since 2008. He really has a big, huge heart, and he's always working tirelessly to help protect children in this community. Gary, I, I don't know how he keeps up with everything he does, but he's just been so giving of his time and wanting to get as many people possible in Georgia trained so that more kids are trained. Gary is definitely redefining the image of what a TV attorney is uh, because he has put so much back into the community and has helped so many people. There are really two missions to keep Georgia safe. One is a proactive educational component. We try to, to train kids and, and, and families on how to be safe, and we've set up a curriculum to do that. The other thing is a reactive. We understand that unfortunately bad things are going to happen. We need to know that our police, our first responders will know what to do in the event a child is abducted, because 74 percent of the abducted children that are murdered are killed within the first three hours. So the police have to know what to do. For a very long time now, Gary through Keep Georgia Safe has been looking for different kinds of avenues to help build safety awareness. And not many people were initiating an area like this, but Gary had a focus on this, dedicated resources, a lot of his own personal resources and time to making this come to life, which is blessing people. Many people don't even know the great work that he has done and uh, the good it's done their children or their grandchildren. 
uh, all because he had a focus on this early on and knew it could make a difference. You know, I don't need a, a movie uh, or all these cameras in, in my, my personal life, uh, but if it's going to make someone feel more comfortable knowing who I am, a little bit about me, and it gives us an opportunity to help somebody through some difficult problems, then, then I'm fine with it. Gary definitely, uh, he juggles a lot. He's a very active, uh, busy person. In addition to being a lawyer, he started a restaurant, uh, Gary's Bistro. For some crazy reason, I decided to open a restaurant. It was a great way to have uh, another presence in the community, a great way for us to, to get together as a family. And I wanted a place where you'd feel comfortable going on a date night or, or taking the kids. And I think we've established that. One of the things that really impresses me the most about Gary is even though we're in a slow economy, he's still a jobs creator. Now I think he's gonna start a new uh, venture there that's gonna be Georgia Pine. I started it as Gary's Bistro, it's now the Georgia Pine. It's amazing, it's, it's a local uh, farm to table concept. You're really looking at taking food directly from the community in Georgia and bringing it to these tables and, and giving people a unique experience that they're not gonna get anywhere else. It's a great taste of the, the South, I think, and, and things that I love to eat growing up, but it's just a great place to gather. Just amazing, unique local food concepts, local craft beers, amazing wines, the wine list is great, and that's passion that he brings to the restaurant, but also something that it's needed in this area. You know, we're sitting here talking about Gary, but I really believe we have to give Sherry an awful lot of credit too, because to do the things and to put up with the things and for us who know Gary, <laughs> to be able to handle all that and to keep rolling as he does. I mean, he's nonstop. Um, you have to have a strong woman at home to do that and, and to back you up and to be able to pick up the pieces when you're not there. We wake up, um, one of us will take the children to school. We rotate who, who does it, but um, we take the children to school and drop them off and get them all tucked away. Gary goes back to the office. Sometimes we meet up for lunch and talk out throughout the day. We go to the bistro to find out what is going on with the restaurant. And we all meet back at the house at 5.30 for family dinner and bath time and prayers and, and a little family time together. My wife and I have three daughters. Our oldest, Audrey, is 12. And we have twin girls that are six. Ashley, who will tell you she's seven minutes older, and Ava, uh, who's the youngest. Boy, life took on a whole new meaning when, when Audrey was born. And oh, wow, it was accelerated rapidly when the twins came along. He is all about the family at home. He um, is very caring and wonderfully involved with the kids. He knows every aspect of their lives. He, he is more interested in spending time together in fun activities than he is buying presents. We, we want to give them the gift of time. I'm either taking the girls to soccer practice or to ballet or to music or my wife and I you know, taking them to, to birthday parties or, or we're going out to eat. It, it's nonstop. I wouldn't trade it for anything. When you see the love in their house and the love for the Lord that they have, I mean, that's a, that's a plus for you and that shows that you're doing what you're supposed to do. And, and his family shows that. They just show that. They have that glow. One of the great pleasures I have here is working with the other attorneys. We have some that, uh, you know, are, are new to the uh, practice of, of law and have been with me from the beginning to be able to shepherd them through that, that process and to, to show them not only how we handle claims from a technical legal uh, style, but, but more importantly, how we deal and interact with our clients. You know, we want to make sure the clients are comfortable and uh, are getting everything and being, being, you know, educated also because all of their rights and benefits are determined by Georgia law. Um, so my main job is to make sure they're educated. It's a given that whoever works for me as an attorney be great with the legal skills, but it's equally important that they care about people. Because if they don't truly care about people, they're not going to be working for me, period. Well, you know, working for Gary, um, uh, you'll notice I'm smiling. And that's because I wanted to work for Gary for a long time. I've heard a lot about him just, just through connections that I've had. And, uh, you know, heard, heard about the charities and stuff like that. And, and what a change from, from what I used to from when I came from with other employers to someone who puts his money, you know, where his mouth is and takes his own time to, uh, to give back. The least Gary can do, the least we can do as members of this firm is give back to a community who's given so much to us. 
Doing this kind of work, you can see just how fragile life can be. I mean, something horrific can happen and just change everything. I was at work, I fell on a cord and broke one of my knees, hurt the other one, uh, knocked my teeth out. My car accident happened on December 11th, uh, 2007. I was sitting at a red light. I heard brakes lock down and I looked up in my rear view mirror and I had just enough time to see the uh, gentleman that hit me. It was terrible. I, I thought my life was actually over. I was at work every day. I got promotions. I was very happy at work. And after that, my whole life just changed. And they found out that there was something wrong there with my nerves. And then they did an MRI and they found a herniated disc in my neck. I was at work one day and I was hurting. And so one of my customers came in and asked me if I had done anything as far as taking care of myself, uh, as far as an attorney. And I said, no, I hadn't. And he recommended uh, Gary Martin Hayes. Mr. Hayes and his associates were concerned about me, me the person, me the individual. Every question I have has been answered immediately. It just makes me feel very comfortable about the case and that it's going forward and that, uh, you know, that I'll be taken care of. You know, it's like the police officer helping the child, which is the, the best analogy that I can come up with because basically I had nowhere to turn. I mean, I was, you know, a little kid lost in the mall. When my brother was diagnosed with cancer, I was having horrible, horrible headaches. And uh, the eye doctor said, the only time I really see the kind of problems you're having is when someone has a, a tumor or some other issue going on in the brain. He sent me out to have an MRI of the brain. And thankfully, it wasn't cancer. But uh, they discovered I had a form of spina bifida called a Chiari malformation, essentially the base of the skull was cutting into the brain, compressing it. And the only relief available to me was to have surgery. So they, they went in the back and they, they cut out the part of the skull that was pressing on the brain. And eight, 10 weeks, I was completely laid up, not able to, to get out and about. Boy, I, I feel for people that, that have been hurt that, that can no longer do what, what they ordinarily will do and empathetic to them having gone through that myself. It was a time where uh, there was strength in faith, there was strength in body, there was strength in mind and strength in soul. And he had it and, and we all tried as best we could to, to do the same thing and get through it. And thankfully everything went well. There have been some, some great stories uh, and results out of our, our appearances on uh, my appearances on, on various radio stations, TV stations. One, we were on a country music station and we were giving parents hints for what to do in the event their child is separated from them. We always tell them, kids, find a mommy or grandmother with children. Well, a, a woman heard that and she stressed that to her kids the following week when they were at Disney World. They got separated from their six-year-old. She turns around, could not find the child desperately starts searching for them, and lo and behold, uh, a few feet away, she sees a mom with kids with her child. Thinking, oh, my, my kid listened, and, and they sent a note saying thank you for that tip. Gary just has the biggest heart, just a heart of gold, and just seems to want to keep always giving and always helping, and just certainly never seems to run out of energy. A couple of years ago, I, I wrote a chapter in my first book called Trendsetters, and the, the title of the, the chapter was, I Will Make a Difference. And I talked about the, the John F. Kennedy quote, one person can make a difference and every person must try. And I talked about how that, that really impacted me to, to want to get out and help with the American Cancer Society, start Keep Georgia Safe, become an active leader in the community uh, to get out and help people. That launched me into a writing frenzy where I have since written a total of 10 books. All of them, thankfully, have become bestsellers. I've even written a book called The Authority on Child Safety uh, as a result of the work with, with Keep Georgia Safe and with the Elizabeth Smart Foundation. I uh, just finished The Authority on Personal Injury Claims in Georgia. 
This was written not only for injured victims, but also for their attorneys to show them how we do what we do at our law firm. I've always been shocked at how he juggles everything that he does from being an attorney to having Keep Georgia Safe, the charity, from owning a restaurant and having a family. He's able to, to juggle it all. It's, it's very inspiring and amazing that he can do so much with the same amount of time we all have. In, in September of 2012, I was, I was very fortunate to uh, be inducted into the National Academy of Best-Selling Authors and receive five Quilly Awards for the, the books that I've written. I actually co-wrote a book with Jack Canfield. He's uh, written all the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. It was an honor to, to write a book with him and to, to meet him out there when I was accepting one of the Quillies. His other involvement in the community is just amazing. And that's, I'm, I'm so proud of him to be a classmate of his and to have someone that has, you know, come out of school and made everything that he's made for himself, but gives back to the community as much or more. Um, it's, it's really um, nice to see someone that, that does that and believes that much in, in the community. In my opinion, the epitome of professionalism, uh, very caring, always wanting to give back to the community. I think all lawyers should should be like that, and he's just a perfect role model. When I was working for the insurance companies, it was about trying to save the insurance companies money. Here, I'm, I'm telling you, it hits home. These are real people, real problems, and, and you take those problems home with you. There's, there's no way to avoid that, and, and it makes you want to fight for them that much more because you, you feel it, you identify with them when these bad things happen. And it, it's nice when we, we get the claim resolved for them and they shake the hand and give you the, the hug and, and you know they mean it. Gary's well known in the state for the commercials that he does, but what I'd like to see is Gary's brand grow into something more than just the attorney. I want people to see the man who he is, the community work that he does, the way that he helps people, not only just his clients, but also the people in the state of Georgia, just as a whole. Well, my mission in, in life is to continue fighting for the injured victims and, and to fight for Keep Georgia Safe. I want to make a difference. I want to prevent bad things from happening. And the difference I want to make is not only in the community, in the courtroom, but, but in the lives of the people that we serve.